there's a joke, but it's also a truism. When you want to make God laugh, tell her your plans. Which um, brings me to being here today because I had a plan, and that plan was to get on a plane, come here, deliver a prepared talk, and I was ready. And I had my talk, and I had written it out, and I had practiced it, and then I arrived in Philadelphia. I took the red eye, so I'm kind of bleary, and I've only gotten a couple hours of sleep, and I'm kind of discombobulated. Go to my car rental, which always takes a little longer than you think it should, <laughs> even if you're the only one in the entire place. And I'm not sure where I'm going. My GPS is not working, and I'm just, so I'm driving north on, on 95. And then I run into the exit where I spent many years visiting my husband's family. I'm not prepared for this. It hits me right here. I had been married for 16 years, what I thought was a good marriage. And my husband came home one day and said, it's over. 16 years, gone. I was devastated. And unresolved. I didn't know it until I got hit here. I couldn't quite figure out why the marriage had failed. Looking back now, I was playing what I call marital Jenga. You know the game where you stack a, a whole structure and then you withdraw pieces? I had been withdrawing pieces of the structure thinking that it would still stand. And it did for a while. But then it collapsed all of, a, all of a sudden. And I got blindsided by that. So I came into my dress rehearsal with my talk, and I started to deliver it, and it felt flat. It felt lifeless like there was no real juice happening. Well, I can't give that talk. And I'm encouraged by the hosts of this event to maybe take a turn. So now I'm blind again. <laughs> and there's nothing worse than standing up in front of a group of people not knowing what's going to come out. and. I don't know about you, but I like looking good. But I realized that looking good was subpar to being real. And being real was more important. And I risk being hopelessly human. But that's what I'm here to do, is be hopelessly human for me, for you, for the people that I serve. What it brings me to is this sense of tension where we try and we contract and we push, and that closes things down versus suspension which humans fight really hard. But suspension is what I've found is our design. And suspension is where stuff gets real. It's where there's space for joy. It's where there's connection. Because with suspension, we're connected to the big GPS, which is the great positioning spirit and allows us to show up in our brilliance and in our authenticity and in our genius. <laughs>